Eight. How many of you have heard about human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, which causes AIDS? All right. Now, how many of you knew that according to WHO, which is the World Health Organization, and UN AIDS, which is the United Nations AIDS Organization, that 33 million people in the world are infected with HIV, and that 2 million of them will die this year because of AIDS, or that 270,000 of them will be children under the age of 15, or that there are 15 million children in the world today living as orphans because they've lost their parents to AIDS. Or how many of you knew that each and every single day, 6,800 people are newly infected with HIV? As of 10 o'clock this morning, according to the International Database, there were 6,767,442,567 people in the world. And so if you take that number, 6,800, and multiply it by 365, that means that by the end of this year, 2.4 million of those people will be infected with HIV. So, now what if I told you you could be naturally resistant to HIV? Kind of a big deal. You could save a lot of lives if you learned how to harness that and turn it in to help save medication. You could save tons of people. So my name is Ron Pace, and I first became interested in natural resistance to HIV when I was a junior in my anatomy and physiology class. I was so interested that I decided to do my senior research project on the same topic, and since then I've continued to follow it because I'm looking at research as a possible career. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to inform you about the different ways you can be resistant to HIV. There are four, but I'm going to choose one because it's the one researchers know the most about. It's the most, and the other one, other types, we know about them, but we don't know how they occur. So the type of resistance I'm going to inform you about today is called the CCR5 mutation. It's a mutation on a gene, and it's incredibly important. Here are some statistics. This was just last year. All right, the four different types that I said there are the CCR5 mutation combined with the CD4 cells, there are CD8 cells, and there are uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, as well as B cells. Like I said, I'm only going to talk about the CCR5 cells because otherwise we would be here all day long. All right, so to begin with, you have the mutation on the CCR5 gene. You know, your genes come in pairs. So if you have a single mutation, which would be one of your pairs of mutated, um, that's called heterozygous, and you are par partially immune to HIV. Now, if you have both pairs are mutated, that means you are homozygous for the mutation, and you are essentially entirely immune to the disease. Now. The heterozygous form, there are about 10 to 15 percent of people descended from Northern European descent with this, this mutation. If you want to be heterozygous, you know, essentially completely immune, that's 1 percent of people descended from Northern Europeans, with Swedish people being the most likely to have a mutation. Okay, now I've told you what the mutation is, let's talk about a little bit why it's so important. This is the CCR5 mutation, <coughs> this is the CD8 and the CD8, CTLs, the cytotoxic uh, T lymphocytes. I'm not going to talk about these two. But what this is, is this is the, this right here is the CCR5. So, to um, a little better, right here, this is the CCR5 and this is the CD4. Um, what the CCR5 does is it acts as a lock. Without this here, and your HIV comes in and walks right here, which then opens the cell. Now, what the CCR5 mutation is, is if you are heterozygous for the mutation, that means that some, but not all of your cells, will be like this. If you don't have that CCR5, it can't, AIDS, or HIV cannot get into your cell and infect your cell. Now, if you're homozygous, that means that 
all of your cells are this way and no HIV can get into your cell. So obviously, it's incredibly, incredibly important. And that's the same thing that's shown up here, but this is cool in the way. So this is your CCR5 and your CD4 right here, and this is your HIV. Okay, now, um, initially the CCR5 gene, great, right? Mutation, couldn't be a problem with it. Well, um, the only, there is, it's kind of a yin-yang personality. As Philip Murphy, an immunologist at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases found, that um, all of his mice that had were homozygous for the mutation were to die of Midwest 9. So you uh, are completely protected from HIV, but you will die of West Nile virus. So that's a little bit of thing. Like I said, there are other ways to be immune to this disease. And so basically what I want you to take away from this is to learn more about this and pay attention and to discover a little bit more about what's going on in the medical fields because eventually this could be a huge thing to help save millions and millions of people around the world.